you know, the teachers across the state had um, pushed for this law back in the 70s, and um, as a result of that, the, the law went into effect that would allow for professional negotiations between school boards and and teachers' representatives. Now, it doesn't require that um, that all of those things are negotiated, but it does require the boards to negotiate into um, entering into a contract if the teachers in their locals in the local uh, school system vote to do so. Are there examples in Tennessee where where the local school boards and the teachers have not negotiated through TEA? There are. Mm-hmm. There are. We estimate, I think, around forty-two systems that do not negotiate. I've been told that in most of those systems, the teachers actually get better deals than what the TEAs negotiated in the systems where they've negotiated a deal. Is that accurate? Well, there are some differences in salaries. Um, and in the cases of those teachers, they're making more money where TEA didn't step in on their behalf. Now, um, I would clarify that TEA doesn't step in on their behalf. The teachers in the local school system have the opportunity to vote to uh, be represented at, in negotiations. And in those places where that has not occurred, uh, they use other means sometimes for discussing their interests with the school board and the, and the director of schools. Uh, but it's totally the local teacher's option. And, in fact, the people who represent the teachers in the negotiations uh, at the local level are, in fact, themselves teachers in the district. But but my my question is that, based upon what I've been told by Representative Casta and Maggard and others, is that in those situations where the TEA has not conducted the negotiations, teachers have actually ended up with better pay. Now, the teachers' union, TEA may not have gotten a, a better deal, but the teachers themselves have gotten better pay in most of those instances. Is that the case? There are cases where the teachers in non-negotiating units do uh, have a higher salary, but they do not necessarily have higher insurance benefits. And, in fact, negotiations affects many other aspects of, of a teacher's work, not just salary. I mean, they, we, we deal with uh, the length of the school day, um, forms of leave, bereavement leave, professional leave, uh, textbooks and materials for students. Uh, many of those things that are negotiated locally are um, beyond just the salary and benefit. One of the other problems that uh, we hear all the, all the time with the teachers' union, both here and, and around the, the country, is that you all – restrict the ability of teachers to be fired, that all these rules and regulations prevent bad teachers, teachers who are not competent, who have simply been there long enough to get their tenure, simply can't get, you can't get rid of them. We've seen it in New York City where uh, you have teachers that are sent to these, quote, rubber rooms where they get paid for years and years and years and years, never go into the classroom because the expense of firing them, of litigating with them is too great. It's cheaper just to pay them ad infinitum. Is, is that a problem from your perspective? Well, the law in Tennessee provides for um, protection of teachers where uh, once they've earned their tenure, which is, takes three years, as you know, and um, once that's once they've been rehired under those provisions, then there are still um, five areas in which they could be uh, brought dismissal charges. Those include uh, inefficiency, insubordination, neglect of duty. There, there's a wide range of reasons for which a school board might bring dismissal charges. Now, we certainly don't see anything like uh, what you mentioned in New York, and uh, we know that in many cases the school boards are reticent to to bring dismissal charges, but no one supports having ineffective teachers in classrooms. I mean, uh, we just want to see that the dismissal charges against teachers are done fairly and that that teachers can't be um, removed from their positions for arbitrary reasons. I don't think anybody would argue, though, that there are not inefficient, ineffective, incompetent teachers in classrooms. There are also some great teachers in classrooms. But I think you could go into any school and pretty much ask the parents and the kids, you could probably even ask the teachers, you know, who are who are five teachers in this school that are that are lousy, and they'd pretty much be able to identify the same ones. Does the TEA do anything to try to actively remove those teachers, or do you do everything you can to keep them in place? Well, it's not I mean, our as a teachers' role. union. It's, I mean, you keep them in place. It's not our role, certainly, to try to remove teachers. It's the it's their employer's role. And but um, if you're really interested in the education of children and the best teachers being in the classrooms, once you realize that this teacher is incompetent and inefficient, why wouldn't you try to clean up your own profession? I think that uh, what you're asking is for us to reverse our role, and our role is not to clean up our profession, it is to promote the positive things of the profession and support teachers that are doing a good job and try to encourage uh, school boards to find ways of working with those who are not doing a good job. Now certainly if 
uh, after attempts to support them and provide additional training for them and those kinds of things, uh, if they're not improving, they're not being effective, then there is room for dismissal, and we don't oppose what the law allows for. But you, but you do, do stand up and defend them when they, they are sought to be removed. I mean, so you, you do stand up for them in those cases to keep them from being fired. I mean, and that's part of what you do. You defend them like a union does. Well, we don't have full – we're not considered a full union in Tennessee. As you know, we're, as you mentioned, we're a right-to-work state. Everyone has the option uh, of whether to belong to our association or not. And if they are members of our association, then we would represent them in any way that we could to ensure – that they're being treated fairly. Uh, Al Mance, the executive director of the Tennessee Education Association, once told me, and maybe he was quoting Al Shanker, who was another big union leader for the teachers uh, years back, that uh, he would start worrying about the kids in the schools when the kids started paying union dues. Is that an accurate reflection of how the TEA approaches the school children in our schools, that they don't pay the dues, the teachers pay the dues, and therefore they're not your problem? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, I'd be very surprised if Mr. Mance had said that. I didn't. I didn't hear that. But anyway, the um, you know teachers all across our state have a choice of whether to belong to the association or not. Uh, they also have a choice of who represents them in negotiations. Uh, they have a choice in who represents them in the association. So I'm a classroom teacher. Last year I was teaching high school math in Gatlinburg, and um, I was elected to uh, this position, and I'm currently on leave from that teaching job. But our, our structure is entirely <clears throat> a representative governance, and the teachers who are members uh, voted, er, vote every year on different policies and programs that we might initiate. We, the, uh, the money that we're talking about here is big. The Tennessee Education Association rakes in about $12 million in dues. I guess it's probably higher now. It was $12 million in 2008, um, $11 million in dues from the Tennessee teachers, a million from the National Education Association, according to the Tennessee Registration of Election Finance. The overwhelming vast majority of the donations that the TEA makes almost exclusively go to Democrats. And while we're told so often about how poorly teachers are paid, as you're pulling in this $11, $12 million from teachers in the form of their dues, you're paying your executive director, Al Mance, over $180,000 a year. Uh, his other executive directors, assistant executive directors, get uh, paid $164,000, $160,000, and $150,000. Is it is it really fair to teachers in this state to take money from them if they're so put upon and so underpaid to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to the TEA union bosses and then to put hundreds of thousands of dollars into one political party in Tennessee? Well, the salaries of our executives are comparable to the salaries of directors of schools, and they certainly have similar responsibilities. Uh, we are involved in professional development for teachers. We're involved in licensure issues. We're involved in many things other than what you might consider traditional union activities. And um, as far as the political action, again, it's all based on the votes of our members. So our members uh, have an active role in deciding uh, to whom we would make contributions in, in uh, elections time. And most of those decisions are made by the local teachers in the district where those representatives are being elected. The teachers in Tennessee have a decision that, that they can make as to whether or not their union dues are used for political purposes. I know in some states and in uh, in some union organizations, people can say, look, I don't want any of my dues to be used for your political purposes, and therefore I want my dues reduced by the amount that you spend on politics. Can can teachers in Tennessee do that? They can. So they don't, they don't have to fund all the Democratic Party activities in Tennessee, but uh, but they do so by choice. The other argument that, that I've heard against the TEA is that years ago there was an effort to um, provide professional liability insurance for teachers in Tennessee, which is one of the main main arguments that I hear from teachers all the time. The only reason I joined the TEA is because if I don't join the TEA, I don't have liability insurance and I'll get sued and I'll lose my house. There was an effort by the legislature a few years back to to provide that insurance by the state of Tennessee, which would have effectively negated that piece of the puzzle of why people would join the TEA. Why did TEA oppose that if you're really looking out for your teachers? That would be a free state benefit that would have been provided to them without them having to pay you dues to get that benefit. Well, the teachers in the um, school systems have choices about that, of course. they um, they can. There are other organizations that provide liability insurance only, and uh, that's just not our main emphasis. Our emphasis is to represent teachers in many other avenues. Um, you know, I always say I've been in the classroom over 30 years, 
and fortunately I've never needed my liability insurance. But I, I have benefited from, um, you know, other functions that the association provides for me. So that comes through in my local negotiations. That comes through in um, lobbying efforts in the legislature. There have been cases where actual school teachers have run for the legislature and the TEA has opposed school teachers running for the legislature and instead opted to support the Democratic Party in sort of a lockstep way. Is that a good political decision by the TEA? I mean, again, you're saying you're for teachers. When you get a teacher running for office, wouldn't that be the kind of person you'd want to support? Well, you know, we have had a couple of unfortunate incidents like that. Uh, at one time, it was one of our board members. Our board is, uh, you know, practicing educators who, who serve on our governing board. And in one case, there, we did have a board member who was um, seeking election in her district. Unfortunately, we did not support her because we have, um, again, under the votes of our members, we have a policy of supporting incumbents if they have been friendly to educational issues. So in that case, there was an incumbent there that had been supportive of of the issues that we support, and it was an unfortunate situation. We, uh, I mean, again, I want to make sure I'm understanding, do, do all the teachers across the state that are members of of TEA get to vote on whether you give money to this candidate or this candidate, or do you do that through a board? Uh, both. There are there are elections. I'm sorry. There are votes that are taken in local associations, um, and typically our final voting board follows those same recommendations that the local has adopted.